Was the U.S. Army correct in its Cold War thinking about the Soviet armor? In 1980, the U.S. Army had a terrifying vision, an armada of Soviet tanks sweeping across Western Europe all the way to the English Channel, and the U.S. Army feared it had no weapons that could stop this vision from becoming a reality. Hello, and welcome to Elon Musk Evolution. If you're a Musk fan and you don't want to miss anything about this incredible person, then smack the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. In today's video, we are going to tell you about the anti-tank weapon Elon Musk company has been developing recently. So, let's see in this video what's the latest update so far. In the annual Air Force Association meeting, Musk told, In the absence of radical innovation, the U.S. will be militarily second. In addition to that, the fighter jet era has passed, says Musk. The future, he averred, is autonomous drone warfare. Since then, Musk is into the advancement of the U.S. military and one of his ongoing projects recently is anti-tank weapons. The next generation light anti-tank weapon, NLAW, developed by Saab Bofors Dynamics, is the first ever non-expert short-range anti-tank missile system operable by an individual soldier. The NLAW is in service with the armed forces of the UK, Finland, Luxembourg and Sweden. Each missile launch unit weighs just 12.5 kilograms, enabling one-man portability in confined spaces. The NLAW weapon system approaches the target guided by predicted line of sight. It employs overfly top attack mode for tanks and other armored targets, while direct attack mode is used for non-armored targets. The single-shaped charge warhead of the NLAW has been designed to defeat modern MBTs fitted with ERA. The missile requires just five seconds of preparation time and is compatible with night vision goggles and clip-on night vision devices. The combat range of the NLAW is between 20 meters and 600 meters. The U.S. and other nations are developing new designs as well. The U.S. Army, for example, wants a family of armored vehicles that will include robot tanks. France and Germany are exploring a joint European tank that might feature a 140 millimeter cannon. No doubt there will be Russian experts that will claim their tanks are inferior with these platforms enter service and demand that the Kremlin fund the design of newer, better models. Modern anti-tank missiles such as AGM-114R, Spike, Javelin, and Red Arrow 12 provide armed forces with the capability to stop a heavily armored tank in its tracks. ArmyTechnology.com lists some of the best modern anti-tank missiles currently available based on precision strike capability and deployability. The first anti-tank guided missiles, ATGMs, were developed in the late 1950s and early 1960s. They used manual guidance systems, which required the user to use a joystick or similar control device to wire steer the missile to the target. The British Vigilant Missile and the Soviet Sager, one of the most extensively produced ATGMs, are two examples. One disadvantage of such weapons was the rigorous training necessary to operate them. Another was that the weapon crew was forced to remain in the firing position until the missile had hit its target, potentially exposing them to risk. Semi-automatic guidance systems, which only needed the operator to keep the weapon sight directed at the target while the missile was in flight, were introduced in the mid-1960s, making ATGM use easier. Wire, radio, and laser guidance were used. Many of these weapons, such as the TOW missile from the United States, the Chinese Hongjian 8, and the Russian Comet, remained in service well into the 21st century. Advanced ATGM, such as the U.S. Javelin and the Israeli Spike, use a fire-and-forget system that allows a soldier to pick the target using an optical or infrared viewer attached to the missile's launch tube. The missile flies to the target without the need for further intervention from the operator once it is launched. This is accomplished, in the case of the Javelin, by a camera in the missile's nose that takes new images of the target and compares them to what is stored in its memory. Fire-and-forget guidance systems are also used in advanced air-to-surface missiles aimed at tanks. Thursday, Tesla CEO Elon Musk referred to President Joe Biden as a damp sock puppet in human form on Twitter as Tesla stock plunged by 11%. Because Musk's lack of restraint on social media has put him in legal hot water on several occasions, he should be viewed as a feature rather than a bug, as the expression goes. Another Musk comment, Biden is treating the American people like fools, was part of a one-sided Twitter onslaught launched against the president by the billionaire entrepreneur. As far as we know, Biden did not retaliate, at least not directly. There was a tweet from the White House with President Barack Obama praising Tesla competitors, General Motors and Ford for their efforts in creating electric automobiles. 
In the letter, Biden writes to General Motors CEO Mary Berra, saying, Companies like GM and Ford are developing more electric vehicles here in the United States than ever before. Tesla, the world's largest electric vehicle manufacturer, was not mentioned. Tesla was also absent from a White House event on Wednesday, during which President Joe Biden heaped praise on the CEOs of General Motors, Ford, and engine manufacturer Cummins for their efforts on electric vehicles. It's unclear whether or not Musk was even invited to the event. This appears to have enraged the world's richest man, according to reports. In the end, Biden's low approval ratings may provide the vengeance that Musk desires, but the Tesla CEO didn't restrict the scope of his enraged tweets on Wednesday to schoolboy taunts of the president. Also on the campaign trail, he took aim at California Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara, saying he should be removed from his position. He also made odd remarks about the United Nations and praised protests by Canadian truck drivers who were opposed to a U.S. mandate that required them to show proof of vaccination in order to enter the country. The behavior of a normal, logical CEO, according to John Coffey, a professor at Columbia University Law School, is not what one would expect. However, we already knew that Musk was not that person, despite the fact that he has achieved tremendous success. Even if he is correct in anticipating Biden's eventual collapse, he and his firms are likely to suffer a great deal of hardship in the intervening period, and there will be no reprisal on the part of Biden, who is already considered a sworn enemy by the SEC and other regulatory agencies. If Musk were simply a private citizen or a conservative media analyst, his attacks on Biden would be of little relevance. The SEC, the IRS, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the Transportation Department, and the Labor Department all require Tesla, the world's most valuable car maker, to remain in good standing with them. Tesla's anti-union attitude is a source of contention with the Biden administration, which is a staunch supporter of the United Auto Workers. Biden's press secretary, Jen Psaki, responded to a question about Tesla's exclusion from a White House EV event in August 2021 that also included GM, Ford, and Stellantis by telling reporters that those companies are the three largest employers of the United Auto Workers, so I'll leave it up to you to draw your own conclusions. Against this backdrop, Musk was cited by the National Labor Relations Board for discouraging employees at Tesla's Fremont, California facility from joining a labor organization. Also reliant on federal funding are contracts with NASA and the Defense Department, which Musk's rocket business SpaceX holds. Consequently, his itchy Twitter fingers run the risk of causing unneeded issues for his enterprises and their customers. In addition to Musk's previous legal battles with the Securities and Exchange Commission, which cost him his position as Tesla chairman and resulted in a $20 million fine in 2018 for falsely tweeting that he'd secured funding to take the company private, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is conducting safety investigations into Tesla's controversial autopilot system. If the agency discovers major defects or safety violations, the corporation may be liable for costly recalls as a result of the findings. For Musk, Twitter serves both as an asset and as a liability, according to Dan Ives, an equity analyst at Wedbush Securities. This isn't what the people on the street want to see. When contacted for comment on Musk's comments, Tesla did not provide a response. He fired the company's public relations team in early 2020. Biden's meetings with CEOs on Wednesday was an attempt to drum up support for his Build Back Better legislation, which has been delayed since last year. Professor Fernando Guerra of Political Science and International Relations at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles believes that Musk's personality may have been just as much of a deterrent to his participation in the conference as his anti-union attitude. Why would you bring him to a party where he has the potential to detract from the festivities? The question he had was, why would you invite him to a gathering where he could openly state that he wasn't going? With him being outside the tent, yes, it contributes to the creation of a portion of the story, yet with him within the tent, he has the ability to completely derail the messaging. Biden is unlikely to suffer as a result of his strained relationship with Musk. He is not reliant on Musk's financial resources. He is not relying on his endorsement to make a decision. Furthermore, Musk does not represent a state that Biden needs since that he is relocated from California to Texas. From a purely political standpoint, there is no downside to excluding him, Guerra is quoted as saying. It was just a few days before Biden met with Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who announced that the company will post a record profit in 2021, fueled by sales of over one million of its high-tech cars and crossovers. Elon Musk anti-tank weapons are solar-powered. As widely known, the use of active-reactive projectiles allows either to increase the range with a fixed mass of the gun or to reduce the mass of the gun at a fixed range. 
Elon Musk completely set a different task. That is, as a cannonball of caliber 150-200 turned into an effective weapon in the fight against armored vehicles of the enemy. And it turned out that if you make a small modification to the cannon shells and shoot them on a horizontal surface, the projectile in the altitudes of 100 to 150 meters will give a scatter to a pile of half a meter. That is, if aiming at the center of the tank, then in the worst case, we'll get either on the tower or on the caterpillars. In both cases, the tank will destroy it, even if the crew inside will survive. It's not the fighters, but the confused panic mongers who do not know where to run or where to jump. The whole idea is to use cheap, ready-to-recycle large-caliber projectiles and give them a second win. And with the use of APC or URS of LDCs, it will hit the tank on long-range steps for a few kilometers. As for the initial speed of the projectile's flight, in our case, this parameter is not of decisive importance. We get the effect from the fact that we are shooting the tank almost at close range from a large caliber, and in a mild time, we can release 10 cannon charges, Musk said. In short, a robot costing $30,000 to $50,000 enters into a fight with a tank worth $7 million, that is, a ratio of 1 to 140. And the tank, if the robot began to attack the chance to survive, is almost none. Okay folks, that's it for today's video. If you're interested in watching more videos on Elon Musk, then what are you waiting for? Simply click the subscribe button and ring the bell icon because new videos are on the way.